Hi, and welcome back to Marketing Made Easy by Jotful. My name is Dawn Verbrigge, and I'm Jotful's founder and CEO. On today's episode, I'm interviewing Ellen Jantz. She is the founder and CEO of Tough Growth. It's a growth marketing agency. Like most new businesses, when she first started out, she got most of her leads through networking and one-off events like that. But now she gets 60 leads for every client that she accepts. You'll learn how she built her inbound marketing program and how you might replicate it for your business. Enjoy the show. My business is just me, so I need a marketing plan that I actually have time to do. I never studied marketing, but I know I have to do it. Sometimes I just need help knowing where to begin. I never know if the money I spend on marketing is really paying off. Jotful's Marketing Made Easy. I'm Don Verbrigge, Jotful's CEO, two-time entrepreneur, former business school professor, and the one with the marketing experience. And I'm Natalie Bruno, Don's partner in crime, certified people person, and the one who speaks with small business owners every day about their website and marketing challenges. We're here to have practical and fun conversations with people who know a thing or two or three, about how to get more customers for your business. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started Tough? Yeah, of course. It's a pretty long story. I mean, my journey with Tough started back in 2017. At that point, it was much more freelance than anything mm -hmm. else. I'd gotten to a point, I'd done a bunch of corporate marketing, brand marketing. I'd worked at a tech startup, worked at like a really small marketplace. And I felt like I got to a place where I had worked with a lot of agencies and mm -hmm. I knew, or at least I felt that there was a better way to build an agency. Mm -hmm. And so in 2017, I did a bunch of freelance because I had no money. I had nothing saved in the bank and I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of runway. As a pretty inexperienced founder, I wasn't sure like exactly what amount I needed to have saved, but right. I knew there was two, two big things that would be important, a website and salaries. Mm -hmm. and so I freelanced for about a full year, well, probably eight months. And during that time, I took on so many different projects, primarily just from referrals. So I'd get like one client, like somebody I'd worked with previously who knew I was freelancing and yeah. do work for a couple months, they'd send me another one, nothing repeatable, nothing very scalable, but I got a mm -hmm. bunch of experience, saved a bunch of money. And then in 2018, decided to make my first set of hires. So we hired two people to, so officially going from Ellen Consulting to okay. Tough in 2018. Uh -huh. And I hired two people, somebody to kind of replace what I was doing in terms of marketing, which at the time was running Google ads. So think okay. like search campaigns, YouTube, Microsoft ads. Wait, were you and running the Google ads for tough for your own business or were you running the ads on behalf of your clients? Behalf of our clients. Okay. And at that time we probably only had four. Um, and so it felt like, all right, let's bring somebody in to do that. Cause we, we have people who are willing to pay us to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I brought on a people ops consultant. Yeah. I always like really understood that if you're going to, if you're going to be serious about building a team and a remote one at that, getting things in place, like a career framework and uh, figuring out like what, what a salary should be. I had never been responsible for any of that. And so really trying to understand what foundational elements you need in place to, to support a team. And that mm -hmm. was a terrifying second hire or third <laughs> hire because you know, they're not a revenue generating all overhead. Like, yeah. It's all overhead and they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. And that made us super stressed or me as a, as a founder and a business owner, super stressed because the only way to really sustain that at the time was for me to take on a bunch of work. Um, and so <laughs> looking back is one of the best decisions we ever made because yeah. we would never be here without it, but um, it was terrifying. So we you know what's like fascinating about this, Ellen, but, is that actually 
our first, my first hire at Jotful was also a people operations person. And I talked to somebody who had, I mean, he had a company that sold for $2.4 billion. He's a very, very successful entrepreneur. And I talked to him and I said, you might think I'm crazy because my first hire was people operations. There is mm -hmm. literally nobody for her to operate here right? It's just the two of us right now. And he said, you know what? It was my fourth hire. And I'm so glad I made that hire really early mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Me too. If I, I would go back and I would make that decision over and over. I feel lucky yep. that it actually happened to Tuff. It's just, it's a, it was really hard for us to sustain. So in 2018, we kind of like moved into a phase of, okay, we have three people. Now mm -hmm. what? And it was a lot of um, bad hires, to be honest. We didn't have a hiring process at that point really solidified. Because there are a lot of uh, wrong services. Like I didn't understand the market whatsoever. So I, I, I didn't really truly have a clear understanding of what to sell or what people mm -hmm. needed, or more importantly, how to how to convince them that it was valuable. Yeah. Um, we did a we did a lot of white labeling work. So for example, other agencies, marketing agencies would come to Tuff and be like, hey, we kind of have this pain in the ass client and we need you to do the Facebook ads, but you're never going to talk to that client. We're just going to white label your guys' service. And again, it was kind of like figuring out what are those things we have to do now to make money and kind of get yes. by until we can figure out how to sustain this thing. Well, not just make money and get by, but also to learn, right? Because in the learn. beginning, you're really just trying to learn as much as you can. And I think when we, when we talked before, Ellen, you were saying mm -hmm. that what you did when you worked in marketing mm -hmm. was not the kind of stuff you did later. So you were hiring agencies, for example, to run those totally. Google ads campaigns. You weren't mm -hmm. doing them yourself until you started freelancing. Correct. Trial by fire, baby. Exactly. It was like, let's go. Let's, let's get as, I feel like, something that I've really had to untrain myself over the last five years in the earlier stages of tough. It was yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Yes to every learning opportunity. F to, yes to every industry, every client, every size, you name it. Mm -hmm. And now we're almost the opposite of that. We say, we say no to 90% of the work that, that we get. But in the beginning, yes, it was just a ton of yes. Let's learn while we're kind of in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right now you're getting a lot because I know that you said that right now you get about 60 inbound leads a month and you accept one as a client each month. I think it's probably the place where every single person listening wants to get to. So talk to totally. us a little bit about how you got from those very early stages, just sort of the three of you trying to figure things out to actually having this growth engine that's predictable and reliable and consistent and works for you. Totally. It was, it was a schlep. I'm not going to lie. I know. <laughs> you know, creating a repeatable formula for a new business was something that we knew would be essential for any kind of sustainable growth, but it was the hardest thing. Two things we were like, okay, I took pretty much bad hires, wrong services, a hundred mm -hmm. terrible sales calls. And, and two things became very clear. I think these are probably more obvious to people who maybe have been at an agency or have experience building a business. But, but I finally was at a point where I was like, I'm either going to go take a job in house and leave this whole tough thing behind. Uh, too tough. Need... Tough is too tough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Growth is tough. And yeah. there, there's like two things where you're like, we need a repeatable formula for generating new business and we need to figure out how to hire better. Mm -hmm. And so for us, this, this immediately for like in around like 2019, we were like, all right, it game on. We're going to try everything. So we did outbound sales, cold emails. I went to pre-pandemic as many events as I could. Um, mm -hmm. I put on free workshops. I said yes to every speaking opportunity. Mm -hmm. We did some sponsorships. We did partners. Honestly, these were all activities that um, essentially did not work for us whatsoever. They, I think they could probably be money makers for other organizations and other teams. That's not really the point. It was more, they weren't the right fit for us. They did you, like, how long did it take you to figure out with, with each of those that it wasn't the right fit for you? Because I mean, I can tell you that Jocko went down a similar path. We tried cold email for a while and we did it, you know, at first we would send one off uh -huh. emails and then we, totally. you know, that seemed to maybe work a little bit. So then we would try to automate it and we would try to send more and it, it just yes. wasn't scalable and it wasn't really delivering for us. But it took us a little while to figure that out. And then we'd throw it away and start on something else. Totally. And you, and that's a big part of the roller coaster is you're excited when you come up with a new idea of something you could test and you know, you get your first customer from it and you have some hope totally. and then you just realize it's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Totally. I would say like per tactic, 
-hmm. probably two to three months. And yep. I will tell you throughout the whole process, it just, it's kind of exhausting. You're it testing is. a lot. <laughs> You're not getting any traction. Yep. Honestly, at this time, I kind of felt like I was uh, running around with my head cut off. It, mm -hmm. it felt like um, I, w I was certainly learning, but there was, n there was no positive momentum. Yes. And so I do think yep. after a while, we actually got to like a last resort, which mm -hmm. has been the most successful thing to date my company has ever done. <laughs> and and I like was kind of like begrudging and like, this is going to be a lot of work, but, but we had, I felt like we had exhausted and kind of like eliminated at least what I knew as options to, to figure out how to drum up new business. And so what we ended up finally kind of landing on was like, all right, SEO, let's yeah. talk about let's talk about content and let's figure out a way all of these things that we had been trying um think about like cold email like when you get a response to a cold email the response is kind of like sure maybe i have time or what does it cost or yeah let's do it uh, and then there's no show to the actual meeting true and so we were like if we can get people coming to us if we can right. create an inbound pipeline those conversations might shift and be like Hey, tough. Hey, Ellen, I, I, I've got to learn about your services. Can we please jump on a call? Yes. Um, hey, we need a growth marketing agency now. So all of a sudden those conversations become a lot higher quality. And yeah. so we doubled down on organic growth. And do you want to know how we did it? Yes, I do want to know how you did it. And I also want to know, um, did you initially go through and create a list of the possible things you were going to try and just kind of figure out which ones you thought were most likely to succeed. And then you just kind of ran out of ideas and you tried to <laughs> decide it on SEO. Was that what basically happened? Totally. And we have a spreadsheet that we use with a lot of our clients now, mm -hmm. but we basically, we came up with a, a full list of channels as mm -hmm. well as tactics per channel. And then yep. we tried to understand um, impact and ease. So yes. how difficult is this going to be to actually execute against? Yep. And what do we think the outcome is going to be? And yep. that at least helped us prioritize because again, it's like your small team, you have so much to juggle. you got to figure out what to work on first. And even if we didn't prioritize correctly, it felt a lot better having a list and it felt a lot better mm -hmm. documenting the process because even when something was a massive fail, you could, you could cross it off. And I think yeah. the one thing that I've consistently learned about growth is that that like elimination is one of the greatest ways to actually figure out what's successful. So it did feel like at least by, putting it down on paper, having it in a spreadsheet and going through it and really kind of treating it like a process mm -hmm. was at least valuable in that sense. Absolutely. Because I think, you know, one of the most challenging things is when you run out of ideas. Totally. There, there have been times when I got, I crossed off everything. I had nothing else on the list and I would just go to my colleague, you know, that people mm -hmm. ops hire and say, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I've run out of spaghetti to throw against the wall. There's just, there's nothing else. And then you have to start reading more. You have to start talking mm -hmm. to people more. You have to listen to more podcasts and come mm -hmm. up with more ideas and build your list out some more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even, even in our stage of growth now that, that I would say is, has surpassed my wildest expectations, uh -huh. we're still going through that process. Like we're yeah. still looking for, you know, additional pockets of scale that feels right for our business. And so yeah. while it's, it can be exhausting and you're at different stages of, of, of figuring out what's going to work and what's not, I, I, at least for us, the process hasn't stopped. Yep. Yep. Great point. And I think another thing to point out is that each one of these tactics delivers on a different timeline. So mm -hmm. what you ultimately chose SEO is going to take a little bit longer to start getting results than something like Google ads, where you're going to start to see leads coming in right away. And so Absolutely. that's something to also keep in mind. So tell mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. tell me how you did SEO then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It took Don, it probably took I don't know, 12 months um, yeah. to really, to really take off. And so we continued to do those things that were like not overnight success, you know, stories for us. Like mm -hmm. we, like while we built this organic engine, we still did cold emails. I still went to workshops. I still tried to host events because we didn't have a healthy pipeline, mm -hmm. but in the, in, in the background, kind of behind the scenes, we got really serious about organic traction and SEO. And so yeah. The way that we did it is we essentially started to identify what are those search terms, those really high, high intent search terms that we know our audience for tough. Mm -hmm. That's we, we primarily work with scale ups and fast growing startups. So right. for us, we were like, we know our audience, their founders or their heads mm -hmm. of growth at yep. organizations that are like 25 to, to 35 in size. And mm -hmm. so we thought about 
what are they searching for? And we, we use some very simple tools like Google Search Console, SEM Rush, which is a yep. keyword research tool. Even Google Ads has a, a tool called Keyword Planner, which is absolutely free. Yeah, and we and just great. we just and great. Yeah, we still use it today. And we started to think about what are the search terms that really matter. And we yep. came up with a list of ten. For us, that was things like growth marketing agency, content strategy agency, technical SEO agency, Facebook ads agency, TikTok ads agency, YouTube uh -huh. ads agency. All of these keywords are really low funnel. Yeah. And for us, we knew if we could rank on page one for these, knowing that it would be really difficult, but, but we would be able to capture existing demand, right? Yeah. So these people who are actively looking for a team like Tough across our services. Yep. And you could do this, we, we replicate this process for non-service based businesses. You can do the exact same thing for service based businesses, but also product based businesses, tech, SaaS, you name it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we built out, we, we call them SEO editorial calendars. And mm -hmm. we, we now have fancy Trello and teamwork boards to do it. But at the time right. it was just me and a spreadsheet. And essentially we started thinking about, okay, we have our 10 keywords mm -hmm. now what what do we want to write about that not only highlights that particular keyword but is also really resourceful you don't want to just like right. turn out turn out crap because yeah you that's don't want to turn out anywhere. content that, and for those you know if you're listening on the podcast, content with quotation marks around it like you don't want that yeah you want it to be that perfect mix of yeah hey, okay okay it, it's keyword driven mm -hmm. but it also is really like tackling a subject that our audience cares about and it's yep. going to be value it's going to be valuable and yep. so we then took those 10 keywords and we built 10 landing pages. A landing page is a page that's on your website. It's not necessarily in your top navigation. For Tough, if you go to toughgrowth.com, you'll see them in our footer. They kind mm -hmm. of sit like below the footer. They're not like, we're not trying to like hide them. We're not embarrassed of them. Mm -hmm. But but the content is it is is somewhat thin and it definitely has like an SEO, it has a SEO angle. Um, right. That said, it's, it, it's still, pretty specific, but like you can go to the, you can go to our footer on the toughgrowth.com website. You can see technical SEO agency, content strategy agency, YouTube ads agency. So we started with those landing pages because we wanted to make sure that those landing pages really incorporated the keyword that we were focused on. Yep. That is, that is literally only step one. Yep. We, we turned those out very quickly. It probably took us a month and we used a template. So if you look at those pages and if you're serious about trying this strategy, I would recommend that you do. You can pull up like three and you'll be like, oh, this is a template. The content is different, but the structure of the page is very similar. And it, mm -hmm. it, it helped us like we couldn't pay for unlimited amount of dev time, you know, so it was like um, and I was writing all the copy at the time. And so we were mm -hmm. like, what's the quickest way we can test this out? So we launched those landing pages and then we came up with five articles per landing page. So for example, we have a growth marketing agency landing page and we said, okay, here are five topics that our target audience cares about that are related to growth marketing. What mm -hmm. is growth marketing? What is a growth marketing agency? What is a growth marketing agency compared to a performance marketing agency? Right. And I wrote all the blog content. I'm not a great writer, but at the time I couldn't afford to pay anybody else to do it. Uh -huh. Now our, our team is a, a content engine, but it's one of those things. It's like wear the hat until you can give it to somebody else. And so absolutely, we essentially for four months went into like heads down. We were publishing probably 12 to 15 articles on the blog per month that interlinked to those landing pages. And I can't yeah. stress that detail enough these pages or any type of content that you create that's in some sort of cluster, they have to connect to each other. They have to link to one another so that when Google crawls your site, they see, oh, Tough writes a ton about growth marketing. They also have this really robust page about being a growth marketing agency. Let's mm -hmm. favor them in search results. And yeah. so those, those strategies have to be very connected and you want your pages to link back and forth. And so we did this for about, I don't know, four months, very consistently. Um, and over time, very slowly, but surely I always think about this with SEO because we see it with all of our clients as well. It's like, uh -huh. it, it's chipping away at an ice block. It's like con it consistently publishing over and over and over again. 
And then all of a sudden that ball started to roll. And we, yeah. we just continued, like we still do it today. We have a very similar strategy. Our keywords have shifted and we don't do as many landing pages now, but we identify every quarter. What are those five keywords that we wanna see mm -hmm. on, uh, tough on page one? And then what's the content we have to write to do that? And yeah. then we just are really strict about making that a reality. Yeah. And now like from essentially within that amount of time for so that 12 month period, mm -hmm. our traffic grew by 3000% organically. And it's it was amazing. people who were, who were knocking on our doors saying, please, we need a growth marketing agency and you guys seem like the best fit. Right. Oh, that's great. So there was enough information for them to, to determine that. Yes, and our one site's thing really think, robust. One hmm. thing I think that's really important here is that you said we kept doing that consistently because sometimes people think of SEO as a one-time activity of you know mm -hmm. adding keywords to page titles, mm -hmm. making sure the site mm -hmm. map exists and so forth. But it's that totally. ongoing blogging, it's the fresh content, it's the interlinking totally. between posts and pages that actually makes mm -hmm. it effective in the long run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we certainly think about some of the more technical elements, but at first with SEO, in my opinion, out of a lot of the services that Tough offers, mm -hmm. Google ads and Facebook ads and email, technical SEO is scary. It's a little harder, in my opinion, to wrap your head around it, mm -hmm. but it's not all that complex. And we certainly still think about like our site speed. We wanna make sure our site is, is very quick. Like that's really important for organic growth. Mm -hmm. We think about our meta descriptions and our title tags, but yep. 100%, 90% of the effort comes to what is our, what is our target keyword what is our strategy? So what are the topics we're gonna to write about? And then we just get to work with production. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every week I interview people on here and oftentimes it sounds like they went through, they tested all of these things and all of them mm -hmm. failed. And then they finally found that one that worked. And I think you could listen, mm -hmm. if you're just listening, you might think, oh, it's just a bummer. They didn't skip straight to that one that worked. And I agree. In, in listening to you though, talk about SEO, even though mm -hmm. it was further down, it seems like you could have moved it up. The truth is mm -hmm. the way you described it is you already knew who your target market was and what mm -hmm. keywords they were searching for by the time you started doing SEO. You did not know that stuff when you first started doing cold emailing. 100%. I didn't know that until I had taken 100 really crappy sales calls. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that's actually that's actually part of the process. Those failures are part of the process because you learn mm -hmm. enough from them that ultimately you're able to make another channel work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as you're able to find some momentum, because you know, like I, I really, I really hate outbound emailing. You know, it, it's it's not great yeah. for me. I just it kind of like ate away at my soul. But to be honest, we did sign two or three clients that way as successful partnerships. And again, it, it wasn't that thing that was going to be that sustainable growth at the level that we, it wasn't going to bring us 60 leads a month, like our, our organic traffic does, mm -hmm. but it helped us stay alive. And that's honestly still a mantra that my team teases me about. Cause we always talk, we set our, we set quarterly goals at tough and our objectives are really around creating a great place to work, but also staying alive. Yes. And if I look back to some of those things that we tested, even though we don't do them now, they, they, they helped us stay alive for a little yeah. bit longer until we could figure out the right mix for us. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really mm -hmm. important. The way we, the way we manage that job, we did exactly the same thing is that my colleague who's just a master networker, she would mm -hmm. go out and she would meet people and she would sign those, you know, one-off deals here and there, mm -hmm. meet, you know, business owners who need websites. And then I would focus on trying to find the growth engine. So that process that you mm -hmm. went through, and if it were just me, we never would have, we never would have lived because mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't actually bringing any customers in for a long time. Now I bring you know, a lot in, but not, mm -hmm. not initially. And so you, you really need that two part effort. And if, if you're a, mm -hmm. a business owner by yourself, you need to be able to do both of those and that, you know, switching back and forth can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I felt a lot in the beginning, like I was barely scraping by even as yeah. a team of three. And it's really interesting to see what happens then when you, that other piece that we haven't talked about that that's led to tough success. And this idea of like creating this repeatable formula for new business mm -hmm. would also not be possible if we didn't come up with a way more intentional process for hiring. And when yeah. you can eventually bring in the right team members, which at the time being a team of three, I wasn't sure we'd ever be able to hire anybody else ever. Right, right. But once once you get more bodies in the room and if you can create kind of transparent processes and really figure out where you're trying to grow that that starts to compound on itself and so mm -hmm. it's really like for for tough it felt like 
finding a little bit of momentum on the organic side, as well as getting the right people on the team, all of a sudden our, our growth really exploded. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's so true. I think it, it doesn't ultimately just come down to that growth engine. It's also the people on the team who are the ones actually growing your business through customer success mm -hmm. and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you guide clients to find their sort of repeatable, scalable path to growth? Is it the process that you went through? You make a list, you find what could be, what, what's the most likely to succeed and work your way through the list? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's, it's almost identical to what we did at Tuft. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much more streamlined with our partners now because we were kind of yeah. like the guinea pigs. Yeah. And I do feel like now we have run campaigns and experimented on every major channel out there. And so mm -hmm. our ability as a team to pattern match more quickly yes. and to identify, hey, you're gonna be successful with LinkedIn ads, or hey, you should really go with an account-based marketing team because what you need is outbound sales, or hey, we're gonna double down on SEO because the search volume for your market is huge. And so mm -hmm. we're a lot um, more experienced at this stage. And so we, but we do follow the same process with our clients. We identify, okay, based on your target audience, let's think about the channels. Maybe it's website CRO. Maybe you're already right. getting a lot of traffic. That traffic just doesn't resonate with what you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe, hey, you're not getting enough site traffic. Let's think about paid acquisition until we can start producing some content. And so we essentially, every quarter with our partners, we put together, we call it a growth marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. And I always think that that seems fancy. It's, it's really, a, <laughs> it's like a Google doc with a list of priorities based on yeah. what we think is going to be the most successful. And the way that we come up with that list is, and, and we apply this to tough as well, but we basically mm -hmm. say, who's the audience? What's our budget? Sometimes the budget is zero. Sometimes it's $500,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And what is the competitive landscape? And what is the value prop? what is really unique about this particular business that we can own and we can sell. Mm -hmm. And then it's a combination of those four things, honestly, a bunch of the foundational research goes into those components. And then we start to identify, okay, here are the tactics based on that information that we think is, are, is gonna be the most successful. And then our team executes and we make our way through that list. And we do that on a mm -hmm. quarterly basis. And some of those things are big successes and some of them are massive failures. Mm -hmm. We just stop doing the ones that don't work and we double down on the ones that do work. How long does this whole process take? If somebody comes to you, maybe they have a product in place or they have a service, they have their initial customers and now they're trying to figure out how mm -hmm. they can really grow and build this growth engine. How long does it typically take before you have that aha moment? It totally, it depends on the industry as well as the stage of the business. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's important because the teams that we work with at Tough are definitely not early stage. They mm -hmm. are now at a point where they are maybe doing like 10 million in annual revenue and they have okay. some traction and they have some traction, you know, but mm -hmm. they're, they're still not quite sure what combination of channels is going to lead to that scalability. And so honestly, I'm they, surprised they get to 10 million and haven't, haven't gotten that yet. How'd they get to 10 million? it's a challenge it's a, a lot of times with, with 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 funding and and going through the same type of process but yeah. our, our my our makeup of clients at tough is super diverse so you've got like yeah. we work with a lot of e-commerce a lot of direct to consumer a lot of mm -hmm. tech a lot of SaaS, and yep. you'd be surprised a lot of these businesses that are really focused on hyper growth still haven't figured out and because it's so hard it's not really a fault of their business but like what yeah. combination of channels is really going to work to be the most successful yeah and I guess it's also mm -hmm. true that ch some channels will cease to work over time, or there's a limit to how much they can scale. And so you need to add another channel on top of it. Absolutely. And there's always changes. It, it's not every day, but even the, like a great example is Facebook. So 90% mm -hmm. of our clients at Tough advertise on Facebook and Instagram in some way or another. And earlier in the year, a big update, a privacy update rolled out iOS 14 and mm -hmm. attribution inside of Facebook got really wonky. Yeah. So all of a sudden these advertisers, even if you were only spending $50 a day, or if you're spending much larger amounts, all of a sudden didn't have very clear data on their return on ad spend. Yep. And a lot of people came flocking to tough saying, what other channels do we need to try? Get us on TikTok, get us on Snapchat. We've got to try LinkedIn. Like we've got to lower our dependence on one channel. So this idea yep. of channel diversification at some point becomes really important. Absolutely. Uh, on, on the other side, it's also like, 
you, you don't want to try 15 channels at once because you're going to do a pretty crappy job across all of them because you just don't have the resources to really be successful on all of them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. When you're first starting, you really just need to focus on one channel, get one thing working and then add another one into diversify. Because mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if you try to do too many at a time, you'll just spread yourself too thin, which is the moral mm -hmm. of the story for entrepreneurship generally. Mm -hmm. The burnout. Yeah. So lack of focus will, will kill you mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So our last question here, Ellen, if you yeah. were to do it all over again, what's one thing you would do differently? Hmm. So many things. But if, I could, <laughs> if I could pick one thing I would do differently, I would yeah. have, I know, beating a dead horse, because I think yeah. the point of hopefully my story of what I've shared is that we tried a lot and we yep. found like one reliable source. And I think yeah. that that's the success story. Um, but I would have started the organic traction on day one. We started it two years into our business. So yeah. it took us four years to, to all of a sudden be like, wow, this is to us feels like explosive growth. And I always just kick myself a bit as a marketer, as somebody who is experienced in SEO, why didn't we take the time and the space and carve out time to actually figure out an organic strategy earlier? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really excited about that learning because we, we pretty much preach that to anybody who comes to tough as well as like, yeah. all right, you're really successful on YouTube and Facebook and your website looks great. Let's figure out how we're going to create a sustainable path to growth with organic SEO. That's so funny. Cause if somebody were to ask, ask me that question, I would say, start building your audience mm -hmm. on day one. Mm -hmm. I think it's really similar, right? Just at the very beginning, totally. set yourself mm -hmm. up for success in these organic channels that are going to be evergreen and they're not going to deliver results for a while. They're going to pay out in the long run, but make the little investments early on in your audience and in SEO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ellen. Well, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode of Marketing Made Easy, please subscribe to Jotful's YouTube channel. That's J-O-T-T-F-U-L. That way, you'll never miss an episode. We'll meet you on the next one.